So now we just need to do the same thing with the previous. So let's try the simplest thing, which is just changing the content on the flex prev on the class of the previous button and see if everything else falls into place because we were applying the styles to the wrapper element to this and the previous button. So I think we probably should just be able to adjust this. So let's find our selector. So I'm going to inspect this element again, and then we can get our previous link here. So it's flex dash nav dash prev. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this selector, I'll paste it in, and I'm also going to reorganize this just a little bit so that it's in order of specificity. That'll just make it a bit easier to read. So I moved this selector up to the top, then this one, and then these are the most specific. So let's jump back to our browser. Okay, so if we expand this out, we're looking at flex prev. So the class here will be a.flexprev, and the content I believe is D. Let's go back to Fantastic. Okay, it's right here. So just the text D. So we'll add that in, we'll save it, and refresh in the browser. All right, almost. We have a little too much space off to this side. Let's expand this out because I want to see what happens when our arrows hide. Okay, so I'm gonna drop back and let's inspect this and see what's going on with this one. So we have an A and we've set its width to the 12.5 REM switch. If we go back to our editor is 200 pixels. So let's change this back to 200 pixels so we can play with it a little bit. And let's see what happens when we drop this to 100. Okay, that seems to hide them both. Let's try 150. So what it looks like is happening is that the icon is actually further to the right than we want. As we expand the width, we get to see more and more of our icon. And as we decrease it, we get to see less and less until it disappears. So I'm just playing around with the numbers here. So it doesn't actually change where it's positioned at all. 